In the name of God, most compassionate, most merciful. Your Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, Emir of the State of Qatar. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon you. I bid you all welcome in Qatar for the 21st edition of the Doha Forum. We built this forum to be a platform for dialogue amongst people, not just to facilitate this dialogue or not just in times of peace, but, but in the darkest times as polarization increases around the world, when communication amongst us is a need. When we chose the slogan for the Doha Forum this year, to, to, together towards joint futures, we were hoping that the forum would be held in circumstances that allow us to discuss positively um, our shared future in a manner that translates the ambitions and the aspirations of the world's people. However, we meet today with great sadness as the world suffers continuous crises. The Gaza Strip is witnessing an unprecedented humanitarian disasters, which makes the free people of the world to ask some legitimate questions about the nature of the international systems and the efficiency of uh, the legal instruments and its principles. And these questions become more important and more pressing as we continue to see the horrifying scenes that we might sometimes have to look away from given the a horrific character. However, it is the reality that is lived by over 2 million people every day uh, for over 60 days now. It is unfortunate that the arguments that are being uh, made for the targeting of civilians are accepted by some targeting civilians, women, children, and innocent people, regardless of their racial, ethnic, religious, or cultural background, is rejected under all arguments. International law and humanitarian and religious values may push us all to protect them and to condemn any attempt to besiege them or to starve them out. This crisis highlighted the great gap between East and West and between the various generations and highlighted the double standards in the international community. The world actually was split between some who called for putting an end to this war and putting an end to the war machine and some who were hesitating to call even for a ceasefire. And we saw those who were calling for a global position against occupation in a different context are hesitant now to condemn the crimes that are happening in the Gaza Strip and not calling for uh, an international agreement to put an end to these crimes. Some, of, uh, some people are trying to reshape this conflict as a religious war. However, this conflict was and still a matter of occupation and a matter of people whose right to self-determination was taken away. Over decades, the peace option was always on the table. However, it was the victim of foot dragging. And here we must ask, who is the party who continuously put obstacles in front of all attempts to secure peace. If we were indeed truthful in working together towards a shared future, we must start by recognizing the deficiencies in our global order, in our world order. These deficiencies will allow the conflicts to continue and prevent us from reaching a solution. This solution cannot be lasting, cannot be sustainable, unless it was fair, just, and comprehensive. We need to also intensify our truthful efforts efforts in order to reimagine the global world order in a way that matches today's circumstances. And we need to give up the bets of the past that no longer match our present. And we need to work towards building the future by doing a comprehensive review of our past and our present in order to rebuild a new global order that respects uh, justice and equality amongst people where no one is more powerful than the other and there is no preference based on affiliation, religion or politics. Some may say that this is not the time to talk about a joint future for the entire world in the midst of the vast differences uh, and the vast differences of opinion in a case that is testing our humanity, all of us. However, we are in dire need today to talk to each other, to listen to each other, and to discuss matters very honestly. And we need to discuss all the visions that have shaped the world order. History has taught us that dialogue is the best manner to face conflicts if 
the goodwill is there and if political will is there and Um, from this uh, viewpoint, Qatar believes in dialogue in order to solve conflicts, and we have spared no efforts in order to achieve that, including our continued efforts with our partners in the region, as well as the international community to reach a ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. This distinguished um, attendance that we have here and we will have over the next few days is indeed quite special and timely because it will allow us to discuss the uh, dark reality that we are living today and discuss a future that is marked by uh, prosperity and collaboration. I call upon you all to use all these sessions in order to reach ideas and suggestions that will help decision makers deal with the current challenges and that reflect the true will to build a joint future. Honorable Assembly, despite the suffering and despite the accumulation of pain as a result of conflict and war in our world today, we must remain hopeful. We must hope for a brighter future and for a shared future. And together, we, are, we stand at this pivotal moment when our humanity is being challenged and we need to keep the hope alive amongst our people and humanity's ability to face war with peace, to face conflict with dialogue and to face destruction with construction. I wish you good fortune and may Allah's peace and blessings be upon you.